So recently a friend of mine came to me with a problem. Inspired by my videos, he tried to customize his Xbox controller. However, it didn't really go very well. He wanted to paint it a chrome gold color. However, for some reason, the paint didn't adhere properly and it stayed sticky and tacky even weeks after it was painted. This was a problem because instead of a beautiful gold finish, his controller ended up covered in uh, fingerprints, scratches, nicks, bumps, and it was quite messy. So to help him, I researched a way to remove the sticky, undried gold paint from his controller without damaging the plastic of the controller. And I found that easy off heavy duty oven cleaner was a great option to remove the paint. So with that, the chrome gold paint was removed quite easily. After this, the uh, finish wasn't very pretty still, so he still decided that he wanted to customize it. So he began with a few coats of primer as you do. However, I feel that the primer didn't like the leftover chrome gold paint that was on the controller because when the primer dried, it had some large cracks all over the controller. But with a bit of sanding and a few coats of a different kind of primer, it was looking like we were able to salvage it. That's when tragedy hit. When we were trying to take it apart again, some of the tabs on the controller parts that hold it together ended up snapping. Being covered in too many layers of paint, these tiny little tabs were just jammed in there and wouldn't come out without breaking. When this happened, he was just too frustrated and done with it to continue. Instead of a beautiful gold controller, he had this grungy controller that was falling apart and it was all separated and we weren't even sure we were able to fix it. This is where I came in and I wanted to save the day. I said, leave it to me, I'll fix it. And I will customize you a controller that you will love. And with that, he surrendered it to me to see what I could do with this sticky situation. So I looked up on eBay some new shells for this controller, ones that were compatible with the internal parts of the controller and setting off customizing a new piece of art that he would love. Something that would cheer him up and would be better than he could ever imagine. So that's the story, but let's see what happened next. So I started off with these nice, fresh, clean, new shells, and I got some fine, wet sandpaper, and I am sanding off the whole front and back of these pieces. Now I actually got a few tips from you guys in the comments from my previous controller customization videos and they were very very useful and those tips did include sanding the plastic of the controller as well as a good primer and a top coat so that's what I'm going to be doing today. But yeah, with this sanding, I just took the finest piece of sandpaper that I had and I wet it because this is one of those wet or dry sandpapers and I felt like wetting it was a lot more useful because it, it was able to get all of those little chunks of plastic out without scratching and yeah, I just buffed up the whole piece so that it had a nice sort of flat, non-glossy surface for me to paint on. Next I'm taking some of my Liquitex Professional Gesso and I am priming the piece with this stuff. Now I really like this stuff because it does have a really nice smooth coverage and you can control it easier than with a spray gesso and I feel with this Professional Gesso when it dries there's less streaks or anything like that. It's pretty smooth but it's a really good base for you know paints and stuff like that because you know that's what it's made for. I did two coats of this gesso because I wanted a nice flat even coat and I wanted a nice bright sort of light color for me to then go over the top or over the top with my paints.
So now for my base coat, I'm using a nice coat of this Liquitex Professional Spray Paint. Now this spray paint is actually very different to your usual spray paint because it is a water-based spray paint. It's essentially a really liquid acrylic paint in a spray can. And I love this stuff because it is really easy to lay down because it lays down just like any uh, sort of acrylic paint. It doesn't have any weird reactions with other kinds of paints that acrylic paints don't have and it was really easy for me to get a nice little gradient as well because I'm actually going to be doing a bit of a snowy scene on this controller and I wanted a nice sort of gradient. So you may be wondering what I'm going to be painting on this controller and I have an epic scene in mind. I had a really good idea because we sort of tossed around ideas, me and my friend Matt, and uh, we came to sort of a rough idea of what I wanted to paint on it and what he would really like. But overall, I didn't really go into too much detail because I also want to surprise him. But yes, I'm going to be painting a winter scene and as well as that, I'm going to be painting one of the dragons from Game of Thrones, most specifically the sort of undead night dragon and the Night King riding him as well. My friend Matt is a huge Game of Thrones nerd. He loves Game of Thrones a lot. Uh, Team Stark, by the way. <laughs> And the part where the Night King raised this undead dragon uh, from the snow was one of his favourite parts and it was just a very, very, very epic scene. And you know me, I absolutely love dragons. I'm a huge dragon nerd and when he said a dragon, I was like, yes, let's do a dragon, 100%, dragon, it's happening. <laughs> But I had to be mindful of where I would be placing this dragon because a dragon is a very detailed thing and as you can see with the Xbox controller there's a lot of buttons and stuff that I had to work around. I can't just slap any old art on it and it would look good because there would be buttons in the way. But I had the idea for the dragon to be on the bottom right side of the controller where the, your palm sort of rests and it would be blowing this blue fire towards the middle of the controller sort of diagonally up I, th I felt like that would be really dynamic and cool looking because you would have this dark blue background as well as this amazing bright blue fire and the idea was that it would have the, on the other side of the control it would have some text that says winter is here i just felt like that would be a really cool addition and of course text is something pretty easy that you can fit into a weird shape and make it look good for the dragon's colors i mixed a small amount of black with a little bit of white so i would have this nice sort of dark gray color as the base tone and i also mixed a little bit of blue into that too because i wanted it to be a sort of icy bluish kind of gray color and then after this when i wanted to go in with the highlights and details i took that gray color and i added just a little bit more blue to brighten it up and to give it a bit more of a pop of color and then i would put the details over the top of that for the text it was pretty easy i just went in with my posca pens because i love these things and i wrote in black winter is here and did sort of a bit of a blocky style because after this i wanted to go over with a bit of white and write the same thing over the top so that the text would look like a sort of white text with a black outline i find that white text with a black outline or black with a white outline is a really good sort of uh, text that you can use over any color and the text would stand out really well and be very very readable now i actually contemplated whether i wanted to put the night king on the dragon because i first planned for that but i felt like there wasn't a lot of room and it was very very tiny details but i thought you know what i wanted to go all out and so i decided to put in the night king and the details are a little bit mm, but if you look carefully you can see what he looks like and uh, you shouldn't really be putting you know it right up to your eye to look at the details anyways i feel like i did a pretty good job after this I wanted to add a little bit more of a detail to it so I added some mists of a light blue to act as a frosty sort of snow as well as a lot of little snow drops and snowflakes and stuff all around that had a really nice effect. 
And now it's time for some clear coating. I was anticipating this and I was also a bit nervous because this clear coat takes a very long time to dry. But this stuff is great because it is extremely protective. It is triple thick, which means it is equivalent to three coats of normal uh, clear coat. And I did two coats of that, so it counts as six coats. So it'll be very protective and the colors won't smudge or anything like that. After a few days of drying, I left it for quite a while, <laughs> I decided to put it together and I was very careful when I did this because I didn't want to screw up the internals, but it was very satisfying to see it all come together and turn into this amazing work of art, which you can play video games with. And overall, I am very, very satisfied with the results. I love the, the amount of depth that they glossy clear coat gave to this it made the colors pop just a little bit more and it gave it quite a bit more of a contrast and it just looks really nice i love that clear coat the colors turned out really nice too and i'm very satisfied with how the pieces fit together i was trying to make sure that i made them look like they fit together because i couldn't paint the whole thing while it was fitting together if that makes sense but I feel like this is probably my best controller customization yet. And uh, yeah, here is the final results. Back when I made my first one, I know I didn't film the reaction of my boyfriend to that controller and you guys were a bit sad about that so I filmed the reaction of this one and uh, yeah it was a pretty good reaction so let's see what Matt thinks of his brand new custom controller. Close your eyes. I'm scared. Okay, close your eyes and like hold out your hands ish. I've been in this situation before. Okay, ready? Open your eyes. I'm scared. <laughs> okay. We're good. Oh, that's pretty sick. That's pretty sick. That's cool. It's like cartoony. Like, you know what I mean? Yeah. And the little Night King dude. <laughs> that's cool. You like the fire? Yeah. I like how the blue fades from dark to light. Yeah. And there's snowflakes. Yeah, that's really cool. Are you happy? Yeah, that's like the perfect colour for the, the dragon. Like I've got the pop, I can show you the pop and it looks like exactly the same. And the fire is like pretty dope as well. The black... The black looks good. ...of the controllers actually looks good. Like I wasn't sure if I would I like how, um, the prefer button, it white. The buttons in the middle are white. white, yeah. And that fits. Because it fits with the snow kind of and stuff. Yeah, that's cool. That's dope. You like it? Yeah. Sick. We do this here. This control's gone through so much. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So many, so many nose jobs, <laughs> facelifts. That's really cool. That's like, I didn't expect that. Yeah. I thought like, it's more like in the sky. Yeah, it is. That's what I thought. Rather it's than like, like the ground. He's like flying. Yeah. But still like in the north area with the snow, but in the sky. Yeah, that's really cool. The flames look really cool. I love the little Nike. <laughs> I drove my best, but you're so tiny. Yeah, but you can you can tell what it is though. Yeah. Even though there's not much detail in it, it's like just colors, but like you, you know what it is and it looks good still. 